Live from the John Hammond Street digital address GA 0066714 at the Sawe Kanda in Accra. This is News at 10 on TV3. We're also live on DSTV channel 279 and streaming live on Facebook and on 3news.com. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. Welcome. First, let's take a news at the news highlights. Government has secured funds to complete six abandoned hospital projects in the Ashanti region. During a tour of the facilities, Health Minister Kwaku Ajima Menu noted the projects are expected to be operational by December 2020. Also, the overlord of the Dagbon state, Yana Mahama Abukari II, has called for peace among Anofos and the Concombes in Chiponi in the northeast region. Yana Abubakari Mahama made the call when a delegation of the Ga North and West Council of Zongo Chiefs in Accra called on him at the Bewa Palace in Yendi. Now, the Amadope Technical Institute in the Volta region is bedeviled with infrastructural challenge, among others. The school also lacks tools for practicals, thereby causing teachers to rent tools or ask students to bring same. An ongoing study by the Ghana Police Service on road traffic offences has revealed that private vehicles are more culpable in road indiscipline than commercial drivers. Out of a total of 210 offenders intercepted on some highways within a month, 164 were private vehicles. The special operation has further yielded nearly 200,000 cities in fines. And on the international front, Iran has urged Britain to contain domestic political forces intent on escalating tensions between the two countries following Iran's seizure of a British-flagged oil tanker. Now, Britain has called Iran's capture of the Stina Impero in the Gulf on Friday a hostile act and rejected Tehran's explanation that it seized the vessel because it had been involved in an accident. The head of the port and maritime organization in Hamuzan province has said the crew of the tanker seized by Iran's revolutionary guards are all safe. So these were the stories that were topical and trending in the day. Let's now do the big one. In the big one tonight, the Bureau of Public Safety's Ghana Public Safety and Crime Report, BPS Watch, indicates for the first half of 2019, the top three most frequently reported public safety events were crime, violent crime and civil disturbances. Crime was 32%, violent crime 32% and civil disturbances with 9% of all cases reported. Transportation related incidents, however, accounted for 41% deaths of all reported deaths in the period. Crime and violent crime continue to be a matter of concern as the two accounts for over 60% of all public safety events reported between April and June 2019. Reported violent crime events increased by over 43% in the second quarter and accounts for more than 25% deaths over the first half of the year. Incidents of riots and demonstrations dominated civil disturbances, accounting for 49% of all incidents of civil disturbances monitored in the first half of 2019. So let's do a lot more on this and speak with the Executive Director of the Bureau of Public Safety, Nanaya Akwada, who has joined me on Skype. Hello, sir. You're live on News at 10 on TV3. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Good evening to your viewers. Yes. So give us the major highlights in the report that you released briefly. Well, basically, I think you have summed it all up that the uh, 
second quarter report, um, which we have done, you know, we've kind of put the first quarter and the second quarter together to evaluate the trends, indicates that crime is increasing. I mean, violent crime is increasing. It indicates that crime is also a matter of concern and civil disturbances. These three key um, aspects of our public life we need law enforcement agencies. We need the state educational arms to, um, you know, turn attention to look at these areas mm. because I it actually does not only affect the um, feeling of insecurity, but it does affect the general business environment. Okay, of the so how worrisome would you describe the outcome of the study? Well, it's um, very worrisome to the extent that violent crime accounted for over 25% of deaths, um, you know, coming out of public safety events. I think that is a matter of concern. And to the extent that as a country, we do not have a crime clearance rate that mm -hmm. is continually uh, published by the police, um, it's something that we should all worry about. When you look at the breakdown of um, the violent crime, we indicated that man murder, um, armed robbery, and assault, these are the three key, you know, violent crime that lead or that topped the crime and violent crime, um, you know, specific cases. And these are the issues that all over the world, wherever democracy is being practiced, where rule of law is being practiced, and we need to stabilize economies and countries, the law enforcement agencies, the mm. security institutions, do put in place programs to ensure yeah. that we are continually bringing these figures down, that we are continually tracking the performance of the state um, security services in this area. Mm. So you summarize what the police should be doing now, but where does the public also come in to augment the work that the security agencies do in bringing down these numbers? Well, it's very important that um, as the, even the general public consume these reports, they also understand that they are major stakeholders in ensuring their own safety. And one key thing that we all need to do is to volunteer information to the police. We also need the police to, from time to time, uh, put out um, requests for information in a timely manner. Um, I think that sometimes when issues happen in this country, it takes the police too long to bring in the public. And I think that moving forward, if we are going to be able to bring down issues of armed robbery, issues of murder and assault cases, we need the police to be time conscious in this manner. We need the police to deploy uh, men and women for mm -hmm. intelligence. Plan. And above all, we need the big foot of the state's internal intelligence agency in this regard because looking at the statistics that is facing us only within the first half of the year if we don't do anything about it we will stand to lose because if the full report should be ready in the next two days you see a trend that in january we have issues like armed robbery surging and then when the police up their game we see it also, you know, descend. And then some way, somehow, the trend starts rising again. So we need the police service, the public the intelligence agencies to mount a sustained, you know, operation in order to bring these figures down. Okay. Now, now so th th there's a seeming lack of confidence in the security agencies because people argue that when you report these issues to them, the rate at which or um, the speed with which they respond to these issues do not really um, give them confidence. How would you suggest that going forward, we build this confidence and make sure that people are willing to volunteer information to the police? Well, by and large, I think we tackled this issue sometime this year, sometime around January. We indicated that the police need a lot of training. Um, aside all the logistics that the government from time to time is throwing in, the police need a lot of training. Training, Because sometimes when you walk into a police station, depending on who you go and meet, the, even the reception they give you. And we are a country with people who... Um, excuse me to say we like talking if I don't get a very good 
treatment or very good reception from a, a police station. Well, I'm going to pass that information on to another, and then that one goes faster than maybe just one police officer um, treating like a dicically a complaint. So we need the police to be very professional mm. in their dealings with mm. the city. Mm. All right, thank you very much for speaking. Every time. With us, Nanaya Akwada is director of the Bureau of Public Safety. You are still watching News at 10 on TV3. We are back with more stories after this break. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, the overlord of the Dagbon state, Yana Mahama Abukari II, has called for peace among Anofos and the Concombers in Tripoli in the northeast region. Yana Abukari Mahama made the call when a delegation of the Ga North and West Council of Songo Chiefs in Accra called on him at the Gbewa Palace in Yendi. After decades of conflict between the Abudus and Adanis, Yana Abukari Mahama II was outdoored in January as a new overlord of Dagbon. Yana Mahama Abukari II said it is imperative that the people of Dagbon restore the dignity of their revered kingdom to accelerate progress and development. The Dagbon overlord said he would work to provide the needed resources to bring rapid development to the people of Dagbon. The leader of delegation of Gan North and West Council of Zongo Chiefs in Accra, Alhaji Bukhari Hamidu, lauded the Yana for bringing peace to Dagbon. The delegation also visited and interacted with the wives of the Yana where they made a presentation to them. <laughs> Now, let's go to the health sector, where government has secured funds to complete six abandoned hospital projects in the Ashanti region during a tour of the facilities. Health Minister Kweku Ajima Menu noted that projects are expected to be operational by December 2020. Work on the six hospitals located at Tepa, Konongo, Kumewu, Formina, Sewa and Bakwai were halted between a period of three to seven years. The health ministry has attributed the situation to litigation and alleged misappropriation of funds. Health Minister Kwekua Juma Menu says the obstacles hindering the commencement of work have been resolved. He hinted that all the facilities will be operational latest by December 2020. Work has actually started on the three in the Ashanti region. We are anticipating that these three big hospitals will be completed before December 2020. At Tepa, contractors have resumed work on the 60-bed district hospital. The facility is currently 80% complete and expected to be operational by March 2020. Contractors have also moved to site at the 60-bed Konongo Hospital, which is about 60% complete. The facility is expected to be handed over before September 2020. The 120-bed Kumewu District Hospital has been left at the mercy of the weather. Some of the structures have started deteriorating due to neglect. The situation is the same at the 150-bed Formina District Hospital. The facility has been taken over by weeds, but the minister assured that contractors would be on site by August. The 250-bed regional hospital cited in Zewa has been scheduled to be completed by December 2020. A loan of 22 million euros has been secured to complete the Bekwai Hospital to be handed over by November 2020. Kwekwa Jima Menu expressed government resolve to complete all uncompleted projects, including the 40-year-old Konfanochi Teaching Hospital Maternity Block. We have actually procured a contractor, fund money, and work is just about to commence. We will soon come and do sword cutting at Konfanochi. The projects are expected to boost healthcare delivery in the region and also reduce pressure at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital. Now, in politics tonight, the NDC parliamentary primaries is on, and in the Laladekotopon constituency, the former municipal chief executive of the area has filed her nomination form to contest. Rita Odole Soa promised 
to help recapture the seats for the NDC, it voted to lead the party. It reports by Frederick Clarence Williams. The former municipal chief executive of La Dadikotopon, Rita Odole Sowa, was accompanied by teaming supporters. They went through some principal streets of La amid drumming and dancing to reaffirm their support for Rita Odole Sowa. She was welcomed by constituency executives of the party. The first time parliamentary aspirant said she will ensure the party's peace and democratic principles are strictly adhered to. I want the people to know one thing. The projects don't just come, but you need to have lobbying skills to ensure that you lobby for the projects to come on board. You, you realize that some districts don't have anything thing done because if you don't have the lobbying skills, you cannot get it done. Rita Odole Sowa urged supporters to remain committed to the NDC, assuring she'll work to recapture the seat. She promised to prosecute a clean campaign devoid of mud sliding and asked the delegates to give her the mandate to lead the party in the constituency. My arms are wide open and I want them to come so that we all work together, we hold our hands together, we lean on each other to make sure that we are taking the seat back from the MPP in Lada de Cotopon. Four candidates have so far filed the nomination forms to contest the primaries in the Lada de Cotopon constituency for the NDC. At the Kong Katamansu constituency, four persons out of five aspirants have filed to contest the primaries. Party sympathizers trooped to the party office to show solidarity to the three-time contestant, Captain Moses Tetelanyo. He promised selfless, truthful and transparent leadership if given the nod. I will not become an MP because of NDC. No, no way. I keep saying it every day that our nation Ghana is bigger and is better than almost all nations that I have visited. Ghana must always win in all our agendas. I wouldn't go to the Parliament House and if policies are being brought on board by the NDC, which are not good for our nation because I'm wearing NDC colors, I would say yes, it's good. No, what is not good for our country is not good for our country. The incumbent MP, Nilaya Fotagbo, after winning the seat in 2004, has decided to say goodbye to politics. An ongoing study by the Ghana Police Service on road traffic offences has revealed that private vehicles are more culpable in road indiscipline than commercial drivers. Out of a total of 210 offenders intercepted on some highways within a month, 164 were private vehicles. The special operation has further yielded nearly 200,000 cities in fines. The commercial vehicle offenders included two motorbikes, eight taxis, and 36 buses, bringing the total to 46. The private vehicles were 43 4x4s, 96 saloons, and 25 pickups and mini trucks. Their offenses ranged from driving on the shoulders of the road, contrary to Regulation 106, subsection 18, of the Road Traffic Regulation 2012, LI 2180. Driving on the wrong side of the road, driving without license, and the use of motor vehicle without roadworthy certificate as managed by Act 761 of 2018. Others were caught with the offense of using motor vehicle without insurance policy and misuse of siren and trade plates as well as making illegal U-turn on the motorway. We have been collaborating with other agencies, National Road Safety Commission, DVLA, to enforce the law. This collaborative effort, which is barely a month now, is actually yielding positive results and it has become the game changer. In the sense that offenses committed are there and then detected, the offending drivers arrested, offenses pointed out to them, and they are processed for court. In all, 120 vehicles were intercepted within the period under review. 190 of the 210 offending drivers were successfully prosecuted with six cases still pending trial. Two are on bench warrants. Seven have been acquitted and discharged, whilst five offenders were cautioned and discharged. This operation 
has brought out very interesting facts. All along, when you talk about traffic accidents, our focus is on commercial drivers, the truck, truck, and the taxi drivers. But from this operation, about 70% of the arrests we've made involves private car drivers, four by four, including even vehicles with GV number plates. What it tells us is that the causes of accidents on our roads may not only be commercial drivers, but people who think that because they are in these types of vehicles, they can get away with it, they are above the law, the police cannot stop them. A total of 137,480 Ghana cities in revenue has been accrued to the state through court fines. Director General of the Police Public Affairs Directorate, ACP David Senanu Eklu, reminded the public about some of the road traffic offences that are often taken for granted. For example, people think that it is not an offence if I don't renew my roadworthy. I don't have to carry my driver's license. The road traffic regulations indicate that you should not drive on the shoulders of the road. If you are driving a car with a DV plate, the regulations say you must fix it in the front and back. You don't put it on the bonnet of the car and think that you are fixed. These are basic safety tips that I believe people should practice and follow so that we can have safe driving on the road, we can enjoy driving, and we can work within the law. ACP Eklu commended the role of the media in fighting crime, calling for more collaborations. Now, the bulk oil storage and transportation company Limited Bost has hinted the company will start the automation of its depot management by the end of year to improve efficiency and eliminate losses. Head of Corporate Communications and External Affairs, Malike J, noted that depot management has to be temporarily outsourced during the period of the automation process. In 2009, bulk oil distribution companies, BDCs, were allowed by BOSS to store their products in BOSS tanks across the country. From 2009 to 2013, due to porous system inventory and controls at the depots, BOSS lost 25.2 million liters of petrol and diesel, amounting to $33 million at that time. As a measure against the losses to BOSS, Former managing director of the company, Kinsley Kwame Uwadakun, contracted TSL to manage the depots from 2014. Head of Corporate Communications and External Affairs, Malik J, observed since TSL came into the system, BOST has not recorded any losses. We take the risk of product losses from ourselves as a company and laid it at the doorstep of TSL. The inclusion of TSL in the equation has resulted in some product gains and we think it is a good way to go. TSL's contract, which was to end in March, was extended to December this year to prevent any losses to bust. Malik Ajay hinted to avoid the human discretion and interference, which resulted in the losses which bust is still struggling to pay the BDCs. The company will start automation of the entire depot management system by end of the year and be completed within 16 to 20 months. BOST has advertised for depot management companies to apply for managing the depots from January 2020 until the computerization process is completed and the management reverted to BOST staff who are being trained. TSL was charging about $600,000 a month for the management of the depots. And when we pressed on, we got a negotiated amount of about $300,000, which we still think is on the higher side. Going forward, when we successfully come to the end of the competitive bidding that we are instituting, we hope to beat the rates down further and to eliminate it completely after the automation. A research and policy analyst at Institute for Energy Security IES Megdad Mohammed gave the breakdown of bust losses from 2009 to 2013. About 74 million uh, Ghana cities worth of products were, were, were unaccounted for within the system. Uh, that is about 10 million in 2010, about 14.3 uh, million in 2011. In 2013 itself, about 45 million uh, worth of products were unaccounted for, which has been subjects of audits. He noted the bulk oil storage and transportation company limited 
has to go beyond the automation to ensure effective implementation. They must have the right people with the right mindset and skills to run the system. Lest we have an automated system which is managed by people who hate the automation because the automation makes it impossible for them to cheat the system. BOST, since 1993, has been responsible for strategic storage of fuel and transportation of same across the country for efficiency and better running of the economy in terms of fuel requirement. That's how we wrap up tonight's edition of News at 10 on TV3, which is also live on DSTV channel 279. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. Many thanks for joining us.